there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're back in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., for 10 things that shock tourists when they come to D.C. And I gotta tell you, there's a lot of fun things. There's a lot of weird things that might shock you when you're here, but one thing that shocks you the most is, oh my God, is everything free here? Well, no, not everything's free, and I'll talk about that later, but the number of free museums, galleries, institutions, shows, tours that you can go on when you're here, it's amazing how much free stuff there is. And yes, there are the Smithsonian museums. Remember, the Smithsonian is a collection of museums and galleries. So you've got a lot of them from the, you know, Air and Space Museum to the, the Museum of the American Indian. To, there's so many Smithsonian museums you can visit. Then they're all free, which is awesome. But there's also the National Zoo you can go to. You can go to the Holocaust Museum, which is a very moving experience. Heck, you can go here right behind me. No, that's not the White House. That's the Daughters of American Revolution. You can go see their museum where different states actually decorate a room in a period piece so you can see what it was like to have a parlor in the 1860s or, or a library in the 1920s. There's so much free stuff you could do here that it's awesome and it's shocking how many things there are that are free. But that leads into the second thing that's very shocked when you come here is how expensive everything is that isn't free. Look, with all those free museums and all the Smithsonian's and all the wonderful monuments you can go to and see and walk in the National Mall, and just take it all in, when you're not doing the free stuff, oh my God, it is expensive. If you're looking at accommodation, if you're looking at food, if you're looking at museums that you have to pay for, International Spy Museum, very, very cool, but it's over 25 bucks per person. And those things can add up really quickly. Like, I worry about the people that live here. I don't know how they pay for it because I can't imagine what the living costs are here. But as a tourist, you're going to be like, oh my God, if it's not free, it's an insane expensive. So be aware of that, okay? Now, the third thing that shocks tourists when they come here is really the feeling of how far everything is between everything. Because when you look on the map, it's like, oh, there's the Washington Monument. It's right next to the Lincoln Memorial, which is right next to the White House, right next to the Capitol. Oh, we can walk there. Wow, Georgetown isn't that far away. We can walk down there. It all looks so close. But that's because this city is so grandiose and it's laid out. And you have these big, grandiose buildings with big, grandiose spaces and big, grandiose spaces between them. Man, it can be... It can be a lot, so don't forget to bring some good walking shoes when you're here because, my God, it is a lot of walking and a lot of distances between things that you don't realize, okay? So use the metro, all right? That's going to make your life a lot easier to get between places, and their metro is super awesome. You'll be surprised how clean it is, too, and how effective it is, okay? But I think the true shock that you'll get with the metro when you're here are the death stairs you get if you stand on the left side of the escalator when you come here. Now, in all of my DC videos, I talk about standing on the right when you are on the escalator for the Metro, not the left, because that's where people pass. But honestly, you'll be shocked. Like, people will tell you, move. They're like, get out of the way. I got stuff to do, I gotta go to work. Or they'll just give you the death stare saying, I want you to die because you're holding me up, okay? So that might shock you a bit too about the Metro. So if you've gotten this far, you've had my ideas of what shocked me as a tourist here in DC. Well, know what you need to do? When you finish this video, go over and watch Rob at Trip Hacks DC and have him go through 10 things that shock tourists that he sees when they come here because he's probably the awesomest guide you can have here in DC. And let's continue on with Mark Shocks. Yep. Now, the next thing that might shock you when you're here and it might not notice since I'm filming here in the winter is I'm melting! <laughs> melting! Oh my goodness, if you come here in the summer, it is hot, it is humid, it is horrible. So make sure the hotel you had go to has AC and, and maybe bring an extra fan for yourself because in the summertime, it can be really miserable here when you're a tourist. And with all the tourists that are here as well, so it's hot, humid, and you're all smushed up together, ugh, not a fun time. So just, just be ready for that. That's why come at some of the other times, not in the summer, so you don't get overrun by you know all the families that are here or the eighth grade tour groups that come. So, so just have a heads up. Now, another thing I think surprises a lot of people is how dead it is by the National Mall. Now, the National Mall is where you have the Washington Memorial, you have the Lincoln Memorial, you have the Congress, you know, you have, the, oh, the, the World War II monument, Memorial is beautiful, the Korean Monument, oh, my goodness, the, the Vietnam Memorial, I mean, it's just, they're just gorgeous. But when you're down here at the mall, especially in the evening time, it's dead, like, totally dead, like, this is really weird, why is no one here? 
because these are all government buildings and offices down by the mall and so therefore nobody's here at night and therefore there's not a lot of restaurants there's not a lot of good restaurants in general down here even during the day i mean honestly you should go to some of the the cafes at some of the smithsonian's uh the 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 museum of american indian has a really good cafe you can eat there but there's not a lot of place to eat down by the national mall and it's really kind of dead here and you're kind of surprised like why aren't there more people around? Yeah, when there's events going on, it's packed, but otherwise, you might want to look at staying not by the National Mall, but out in different parts of the city. And when you go around the city, another thing that might surprise you or shock when you are here is the amount of homelessness and poverty you will see in the district. I mean, it's really sad to see this, this great country you have, and it's just a beautiful place, but you see so many people that are suffering here in the capital, and it's one of those things you'll notice, whether it's a tent city outside of Union Station or people wandering the streets or, or people you know going into stores and wandering around. It, it, just, it just breaks your heart and it surprises you that we don't have more here. Oh, looks like Air Force One's taking off. Here. See? There you go. That was pretty cool. Now, something in relation to the people and kind of the service when you are here in D.C., one thing I will say is you'll kind of be surprised that it's not that you don't find nice people here in D.C. Like, we have a number of friends from the D.C. area that we really love and, and show us a good time when we come here. But in general, this is not a friendly city. You're not going to get, you know, the service with a smile. You're not going to get the locals say, oh, you should go do this. Here, go check this out instead. You don't have that here. People are a bit more guarded or they're, they're particular with the people they'll talk to. So do be ready for that. So your over friendliness, if you're coming from like myself from the Midwest, won't be much appreciated when you are here. Now, something I think might shock people, especially if they're tourists that haven't come to D.C. since the 80s, 90s, or early 2000s, is how much D.C. changes. I mean, the restaurant scene, the bar scene, the club scene, the even the museum scene and the gallery scene really changes a lot. And I know a lot of people, if you, I mean, talking to my mom and other people, they're like, oh, well, you just go to Georgetown. Oh, no, 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 no. If you look at the, if you look at a map of D.C. and you look for Michelin stars, you're not seeing much in uh, you're not seeing much in Georgetown. So go out and explore some of the other different parts of the city. Yeah, Capitol Hill is really cool. Ivy City, which used to be an industrial wasteland, now has some really cool stuff to go eat when you are there. You can go to Cleveland Park. You can go to Brooklyn. I mean, there's there's so many different neighborhoods around for you to enjoy that it's not the the good old days of the 80s and 90s where it's just we go to Georgetown and that's it. Now, I mean, Georgetown, you don't even need to. I mean. It's cool to see the buildings, but go explore more places, all right? And then I think the last thing I want to mention about things that'll surprise you when you come to D.C. are all of the amazing day trips you can take from D.C. I mean, it's not just coming to see the monuments and the museums, but go out and explore things that are nearby. Within a couple hours, you have tons of really great things to do. That's why people use this whole area as a really good family vacation destination. Because yes, you've got DC. Or you can head down to Alexandria, New Virginia, or go over to Annapolis and Maryland. Heck, you can go to Harper's Ferry in West Virginia and see history and gorgeous nature when you're there. Or you want to drive two and a half hours down, hit Bush Gardens by Williamsburg and see historic Williamsburg, which is a fantastic place to go. Because there's so many things that are right outside the city that you can go and enjoy. So it makes a great base. So, I hope this didn't shock you too much and it makes you want to come here to D.C. because it is a fabulous place to visit in the U.S. All right, so I'll say bye from here outside the Daughters of American Revolution Museum where my mom is hanging out right now. Bye.